First phrase is built off of an E diminished chord. So there's that idea. It's these first three. It's that idea of um, using chords for your bass lines. It's a good foundation pattern and movement. A lot of, uh, you know, if you look at an actual bass player, they are playing intervals. They're not just playing random notes. They're playing chords or parts of chords. This works because you have this A. It's the scale, the tonic note of the scale and it goes and it hits that a and it just sits there and kind of stabilizes what is a pretty high jump like you don't want your 808s to go too crazy so if you start going crazy you want to make sure you're hitting this note early on so that it has time to go crazy still again let's see if this a was a g you know, it doesn't sound the same. It sounds a little bit wacky. It sounds okay, but this A is why it's like a pop track, because it doesn't... The A just lets it go crazy and stays the course. And then we've got riff number two. So this is the seventh of the scale. It's B. And B desperately wants you to play A next. So you play that B and it's like, we're done here. This is the last note I'm playing because after this I have to play this A. And I think the D has the same quality, just like energy. So it goes like high energy, pause, more energy, more energy, and then final, final energy. Uh, so it really just plays this, this B, which has some energy, some movement to it, and then you play those two notes which are ready to go right into the flex section. picking notes that work well together. Um, you can do it through listening intuitively or understanding why you're doing it. But this guitar part is playing a typical pop progression. A good way to make interesting chord progressions with melodies is play the bass notes. And then you can play things over top or you can like play whatever you want. You can move these around. And it doesn't matter because you're playing the bass notes. So we know where we're supposed to be. But playing this higher note usually should come later on because it adds more tension. Just adds a little bounce to the track. Stays in line with the 808. You know, typical clap. I layered it with a high clap, a low clap, and a live clap. And together, they sound pretty good. You can uh, change the volumes. I delayed them delay two of them a little bit so they aren't all hitting at once because that doesn't usually sound good. Then the hi-hats. It follows the general rhythm of this song which is like very boxy. It's a short loop. It's a four bar loop repeating. But the guitar is... Oh no, yeah, it's just a four bar loop that repeats basically which gives it this very fast feeling because it's not this long, it's not a long chord progression like you, you know, played this out. 
Like, it's not like that. It's basically a four bar loop the whole time. And to make up for the simplicity of that four bar loop, the this section comes in. And it's just, you know, 16 note, 16 note hi-hats with this double up right here for a little more energy and that's pretty much it it's really simple and if you're into this you should check out artists like j-rob oshi medicine it's basically soundcloud from um 2014 15 16 where this style was basically invented was with just jumpy 808s all over the place playing high samples so yeah that basically concludes this pretty simple just let me know what i did well what you want to see next thank you